Hi, I'm Jack Cuso. Months and months ago, I asked my fans a simple question. What is the single coolest Bakugan you can think of based on these three factors? Aesthetics, gimmicks, and uniqueness. You guys responded with more than 150 comments, so using your suggestions and a lot of my personal opinions, I have created the ultimate top 10 coolest Bakugan ever list. Number 10, Abyss Omega. Obsith was the only person to suggest this Bakugan, but gosh darn it, I liked his suggestion. Released in Bakugan Nuvastroya, Abyss Omega was one of the first Bakugan to really make me say, wow, that really looks like a real monster. It stands incredibly tall. At a time when most Bakugan were just these squat, stumpy little guys that mostly still looked like spheres, only suggesting traits of dragons or warriors. But Abyss Omega looks almost exactly like their monster form in the anime. The elegant curves of their long neck connect smoothly once unfurled, accentuated by the simple but beautiful fin patterns revealed inside. The curve making up the front of its body is posed to suggest a surprising level of dynamic movement. It's very easy to envision Abyss Omega rising up out of the water and slithering out onto shore. And for goodness sake, it looks exactly like the Unagi from Avatar The Last Airbender, and it really doesn't get much cooler than that. Or I guess there's specifically nine things cooler than that. Number 9, Ultra Nilius. Nilius Ultra is on this list purely because a lot of people suggested it, but I can see where they're coming from either way. Many people specified Ultra Nilius from Battle Planet, but others didn't say whether they meant Battle Planet or the Armored Alliance version. Either way, both are darn cool Bakugan. Personally, I prefer the version from Armored Alliance. I think his design is cleaner, more dynamic, and more sleek. The lean-forward posture doesn't quite fit his design from the show, but it looks more realistic overall. That said, the complexity of the design from Battle Planet cannot be ignored. He stands at an imposing height, towering above most other Bakugan. His necks swoop down aggressively, with eyes pointed outwards, scanning the horizon. His posture is sort of like a big cat on the hunt for its next prey. If you ignore his dopey little arms. This one was hard to choose. There had to be a Dragonoid on the list, but how to choose one Dragonoid out of the dozens that they've made? One of the judging categories was uniqueness, and most Dragonoids look very similar. And since I got dozens of suggestions for different Dragonoids, there was no clear consensus whatsoever. And for that very reason, I decided to pick a Dragonoid that no one suggested, but one that I'm sure many people will appreciate. Number eight, Lumino Dragonoid. Lumino freaking Dragonoid. This boy is chrome, he is shiny, and he is ready to disco. Chase your bliss, Lumino Dragonoid. Don't let anyone hold you down. I am like 80% sure that every Lumino Dragonoid was released with vac metalized chrome horns and feet. And vac metalization is expensive to produce, but I don't think there was anything particularly special about it aside from that. They just did it, and it's cool. It isn't just the chrome that makes me choose Lumino, but rather its entire shape. Compared to other Dragos from Gedalian Invaders, there's just something about Lumino that is undeniably cooler than most. He looks more exaggerated, I guess? More extreme, more dragon-like. His horns are bigger, he's hunched forward rather than upright, he is a total beast. Dance the night away, Lumino Dragonoid, and may we all someday sparkle as bright as you. Number 7, Barry Beyond. Bakutech time! This Bakugan was never available in the US or anywhere else outside of Japan, and that is a darn shame, because it's arguably one of the strangest Bakugan ever created. Or at least one of two Bakugan that share a very similar feature, but I'm gonna focus on Very Beyond because it's the one that I own. Bakutech was a game that functioned mostly the same as the Western Legacy Bakugan rules, in which players take turns to land on and battle for gate cards. But Bakutech had an emphasis on double stands and critical KOs as the primary ways to win cards without even needing to battle. And in this context, the design of Barry Beyond makes perfect sense. A soft, flexible silicone rubber belt known as the Silicone Barrier encircles the Bakugan in its ball form. Only when it opens can we see the true brilliance of its design. The barrier acts as a very effective rebound service for other Bakugan, which can be used in a variety of ways, but most notably for blocking your opponent's Bakugan from getting onto the gate card. 
Its wide stance totally covers the front of a gate card, and only with some very skillful rolling can one manage to get behind it. As far as design goes, it's supposed to be some kind of a spider, I guess? The silicone barrier may have a web pattern embossed on it, but it just doesn't scream spider to me. And as a word of advice, never scream spider unless there is actually a spider. Ugh, ugh, gosh, gross, yuck, Alto Bronte's disease, no, gross, lumpy, bad roll, ew, no, is what I would say if this didn't happen to be the most spectacular transformation of any Bakugan ever created. Number six, Ultra Garganoid. This is one of the most suggested Bakugan in this video. Despite seeing nearly zero competitive play last year, Garganoid Ultra made perhaps the most striking impression of what the Bakugan reboot had to offer. Never has the design so perfectly encapsulates what makes standing a Bakugan so exciting, and what makes closing an Ultra so freaking frustrating. But no, it's just really cool. Its tail is so massive and spring-loaded that its flip happens consistently and looks consistently beautiful. In fact, this is one of the main Bakugan I use to show the brand off to kids if I ever have the need to demonstrate. I never let them try to close it, of course, because that would cause a lot of problems, but it's so theatrical that it always makes people's eyes light up at the possibilities of what these marbles can contain. Its design once opened is pretty cool as well, albeit not wildly show accurate in proportions. Garganoid from Battle Brawlers was one of the coolest Bakugan that I never had, but they have absolutely done justice to the character. Number 5, Kloptor Ultra. Bakugan Brawl, it's an eyeball! It's Kloptor Ultra. This one is a ball in more ways than one. Feast your eyes on a true sight to behold. Kloptor is friggin' weird, okay? It is a big eye fish. An undeniable eldritch abomination, but one that truly displays Bakugan's creative design potential. Its toy form is truly unlike anything else. Bat-like wings, long tail, a spiky round body with a piercing eyeball displayed prominently at the front. Hey, that eyeball sure does look conspicuous, doesn't it? That's what I thought. And after a bit of searching on the monster form, you might find a button. Push the button down and... Okay, it doesn't explode, but it does shoot their little eyeball out. Pew pew, pachoo. Why does it do this, you may ask? Well, I happen to have an exclusive scoop. I asked the Bakugan toy designer, Michael Lee, about Kloptor's action feature back in 2019 at the commercial shoot, and he said, well, we just thought it would be cool. Thanks, Mikey. This one goes out to you and your cool Bakugan. I really didn't expect so many people to suggest this one. I thought it was only a personal favorite, but I was dead wrong. I suppose beauty is in more than just the eye of the beholder. Puss. Hydronoid. The shape which I chased like a forgotten love in my younger days. 2008, you great heir of mystery and unknown. What hours I spent on the church playground, asking other kids if they had ever seen you in person. What threads I chased, trying to uncover any truth in your existence or the reason why you don't. What reason could there possibly be that could justify a vacancy in the space you should occupy? Darkest single-headed hydronoid, dark specter of my childhood. I see you sometimes. In my dreams, or in the shadows of the corner of my eye. I can't tell which is which anymore. I can't tell if you're real or if you're just a feeling. The shape of a memory of a world that never was. Is it possible to mourn for something that never existed? Oh, but they made a translucent one, didn't they? It's not the same, okay? It's just not the same. They made a translucent one, and yeah, that's pretty cool. It doesn't quite have the same design as the one we saw in the show, but it is close enough. This Translucent Hydronoid was released years after the first season of Battle Brawlers, and the fandom has no idea what the reason behind it was. Was it designed for Battle Brawlers as a B1, but never released because it was only featured in a few episodes, so they thought it would be easy to cut from the production run and save money and no one would care? Who knows? Either way, it's considered one of the rarer Bakugan in existence, even in the Translucent variety. 
And gosh, it's really cool. Sharp, wide face, spines running down its back. It's just about as menacing as a Bakugan could look, and way more elaborate than most Bakugan from Season 1. Its elusivity only increases its cool factor. Does anyone know the truth about Darkest Hydranoid? What truly happened behind the scenes that resulted in its delay, and it truly never being released in its true form? Does the real, opaque plastic form exist somewhere on this earth or beyond it? And what would it be like to have this knowledge, to know the truth disallowed from ever revealing it? The world may never know. Number 3. Jigen Dragon. More Bakutech time! Jigen Dragon is a Japanese exclusive marble from late in the Bakutech series. Jigen is unlike any other Bakugan before it, and there probably won't be a Bakugan like it ever again. The Bakutech B3 bind system allows it to split in half to combine with other Bakugan. That's hardly Jigen's defining feature, but I'm going for the world record on talking about the bind system in videos that aren't necessarily about the bind system. Bakugan! Jigen Dragon is the first and only Bakugan to have four different modes of transformation, otherwise called dimensions. First dimension. Second dimension. Third Dimension. Fourth Dimension. The secret lies in two switches on Jigen's top, placed at a cross angle from one another. One switch lets the front half fall forward, and the other switch does the same for the back half. Alternate these combinations and you've got four distinct forms, each with their own tactical benefits. In its first dimension form, Jigen's weight pushes forward and up, making for more effective critical knockouts. And in its fourth dimension form, it stands more sturdy and occupies more of the gate card, keeping other Bakugan from standing or knocking it out. If you combine the front or back halves of Jigen with another Bakugan, that Bakugan also gains the ability to shift form. The bind system on its own is already a feat of engineering, yet somehow they have taken it to another level. You might be wondering how Bakugan could get any cooler than that. Easy answer. Infamy. Number 2, Helios Mark II. Helios, the main antagonist Bakugan of New Vestroya, did not immediately get a toy form of his evolved cyborg form in US stores. He seemed primed to go the exact same direction as Hydranoid in Season 1, a cool Bakugan that would never actually exist. What the? Personally, I thought he would never be released until Gundalian Invaders, since he was a Battle Gear compatible Bakugan, but he never did arrive in US stores. Little did we know, he was widely available in Japan with many different variations, a few of which I have managed to get my hands on. A normal show accurate version? a Battle Gear compatible version released later, and this very rare clear plastic attributeless version. The full range of main cast Nuvastoria evolutions were absent from US stores back in the day, but the most desirable was, and still is, Helios Mark II. You might be wondering why him specifically, but if you're not a fool, you'll know it's because he is frickin' cool looking! Swept back wings, a unique silver, black, and red color palette, and a forward-facing horn way before it was cool. I do like the more natural-looking, curvy modern Bakugan, but sometimes the sharp, square edges of Bakugan like MK2 and Classic Drago are just... perfection. With his original form, his wings stop right there and won't go back any farther, but the wings on his Battle Gear form pull back a bit more and splay apart, making plenty of room for the twin destructor that he so often came with. This Bakugan was also heavily requested, and... I knew it would be. Okay, I'm going off script on this one because I don't want it to come off cheesy or fake, because this is coming very much from the heart. Hundreds of Bakugan to collect. This is the- Number one. Aqua Sphere Ripper. Kind of. Aqua Sphere Ripper is an important Bakugan to me in many different ways. For one, it was the Bakugan that was featured in pretty much all of the commercials for year one of Bakugan. Right at the end, you'd see that Fear Ripper roll out and stand with, you know, his big meaty claws. 
What did you say, punk? Big meaty claws! These commercials directly resulted in the first Bakugan that I ever saw in person, because my friend saw those commercials and went out and specifically bought an Aquas Fear Ripper in the stores. And I've told this story before, but when he stuck the Fear Ripper to the front of my mailbox outside and popped it open and my mind exploded with the possibilities of learning what Bakugan actually were, my whole life has very literally, especially now, never been the same. And that is why I personally list that Bakugan as my number one coolest Bakugan, because without it, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be making these videos, I might not even be into Bakugan at all. I mention this specific Bakugan, not to assert that this is actually, literally, the coolest Bakugan. The real number one of this video is whatever Bakugan grabbed you. Whether it's your first Bakugan, the first Bakugan you saw in person, a Bakugan from the show that you just had to go out and get, a Bakugan you love from the video game, a Bakugan that you randomly heard the name of one episode, then decided to never watch the show again because it was too stupid, but then you end up watching a few YouTube videos like 10 years later, and you fall down a Bakugan hole that you'll never escape because you've made friendships that will never let you leave. That is, ultimately, the coolest Bakugan ever. Yeah, I know it's a cop-out answer. Shut up. I don't care. It's true. It's uh, it's there's no there's no other better answer. I can, I'm not going to I'm not going to say, "Oh, it's Helios Mark 2 because then someone's going to say, "Oh, I think Infinity Helios is cooler than Helios Mark 2." I'm going to say, "You're wrong inherently." And I don't want that to be the tone of this. I'm a positive person. I really want to see a comment from everyone who watches this video. What is the Bakugan that did it for you? What is the Bakugan that grabbed you, pulled you into this fandom, and just hasn't let you go since? I love hearing stories like that. I love hearing people tell me what their favorite stuff is, so it would really warm my heart to see a lot of those memories get shared in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JetCuso, and I'd like to give a big thanks to VeronoC, to One Only Prime, and SheVidus for supporting my channel on Patreon. You too can support my content at patreon.com slash JetCuso. Thank you again for watching, this is JetCuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoo!